What's up, guys? I was bored. I decided to do a horror movie review. Although, also, I got some reviews from guys like Chris Stuckman who did who reviewed films like Dream House, Silent House, uh, The Pact, and The Innkeepers. I think The Innkeepers is on Netflix. I haven't watched it yet. I'm trying to watch other stuff on there before it's taken off at the end of the month. Yeah, it's, it really sucks. I have one down. I think I have a couple more to go. So, I think I'm hanging on the right track. Also, I have shit on my, uh, my, uh, my DVR that I need to get rid of, but whatever. This is, a uh, this is a horror film I watched, I watched, like, I think, like, last year, and it's pretty cool. It's actually a classic, I mean, anyone who grew up with this in the 80s would tell you that it's a classic, and also has one, of, has one of the most iconic characters in the horror movie genre. Nightmare on Elm Street, written, directed by Wes Craven, starring Robert Englund, I know Johnny Depp was in it, it's his first ever film role, but we all know that. Oh, uh, man. Um, hold on a minute. Like I said, amateur. And, you know, I haven't seen this movie in a long time, so what exactly did I remember? Okay, I'm having some problems with my internet, because, I mean, whenever there's like a storm or anything like that, the internet just slows down, so it may take a while, it may not load up at all. But, uh, yeah, this is being a pain in the ass. <laughs> well, I guess you know about it. It's about, like, a, like Nancy Thompson. I don't even remember that her, like, I don't know the actress's name, but luckily I knew the character's name. Yeah, give me some credit for that, even though I haven't seen this film in a while. And, like, her, like, girl, like yeah, boyfriend, Glenn, they were joined up. Like, uh, she and her friends live on Elm Street, and whenever they're going to sleep, like, her one of her friends... Like, she's only, she's had this, like, nightmare over, like, whenever she goes to sleep, she sees this, just this deformed person, supposedly a person, based on what you see, unlike what, you know, his appearance could, what his appearance would really just say if he really is a person or not. <laughs> and, uh, one day, while, like, uh, she's with her boyfriend, and, like, I mean, they're, like, they're, like, get together. Yeah, this is a spoiler alert. She's in, she falls asleep, and as a result, the person known as Freddy Krueger is revealed to the audience for the first time, is feared in full frame to the audience for the first time, and she kills him while she's asleep, well, kills her while he, while she's asleep, in one of the, one of the most creative horror kills I've ever seen. Spoiler alert, I'm sorry, but to be honest, this movie came out in 1984, and you probably saw something like this in the remake, which I didn't see, I didn't want to, because I heard it was so bad, it just butchered. His legacy butchered the legacy of the franchise, and of course ruined the character of Freddy Krueger. I'm a huge fan of this movie. I'm not a huge horror movie guy, but I do. But I've seen some good horror movies. I've seen ones like uh, It Falls was a good recent one. Halloween is a classic. It, it is dated, just like this one, but at least it had some cool. But it, it is a, it has a legacy and it is influential. And I do think it's a, I think they both are great movies. That's right. I think it's a great movie. Just because it's old and it has some dated elements to it doesn't mean I can't doesn't mean I can't like it. Doesn't mean I have to love it. I mean, yeah, I know it's dated, but you know, there's some things that make up for otherwise dated elements. Such as let's see, the influence. I mean you created one of the most it created one of the most iconic characters in the horror movie genre, Freddy Krueger. This guy is just so cartoonish in his features and personality. And in fact, like He's just so over the top and silly, yet there's so much, it embraces that. He embraces that personality and creates a character that has a lot of flexibility in terms of a character. He's just a really cool character. He's, he's, he, has this, he has this element of dark comedy to him that really adds something more to this film. He has an element of comedy to it, and as a result, it becomes actually quite entertaining. But also, he is pretty grisly, and he has some crazy horror kills me. That glove, the fedora, the striped jacket, the burnt face. Hell, even once you can see his face pulled off. And seriously, there was one time where they did disturb me once, like, once Nancy fell asleep in school, and he just, you know, just, I mean, you, you may not get, I'm gonna show you guys. Yeah, you know that scene, she cut, he cut himself open, that actually kind of disturbed me quite a bit, thanks to the use of, uh, graphic imagery, I guess you could say it is. I don't know. It's actually quite a good horror film, and one thing I really like about it is its is its origin is its creativity and really just some of the premise. It's very it's very it's very quite it's very quite creative and pretty smart actually. Why? 
Mostly, it also is quite mind-bending. It actually is a lot more, it's actually like trippier than you may think it is, especially when some people tell you about the premise. It quite fucks with your mind, actually. Holy shit. Craig goes to West Craven for that. One thing I like about this movie is really the premise. The premise is very, very creative. Seriously, it's just like the people behind this. Like, Wes Craven got, in, it got inspired by a real-life event. Not because of a killer, like these, like there was this case of people who died while dreaming and there was no real cause for it. I mean, it, it, they just fell asleep and they died. There was no heart attack, no natural causes. It was just so weird. And it's quite, that's quite inspiration when you create a hell of a, a horror movie killer that could just, you know, kill, they could actually haunt you and kill you in your dreams. And also, one of my favorite things about this movie is it really bends your mind. It really screws over with your head and it really makes you think. And it doesn't really insult you, it's not lazy, it really makes you want to think. You're like, how the hell is this true? Like one scene, I'm going to spoil this. Nancy is falling asleep in school, Freddy's like chasing after her, she burns her arm on a pipe, wakes her up, and the weird thing is when she wakes up, she has a burn on her arm from the pipe. It's weird. <laughs> Seriously, it's it's trippy as hell. You will, it's almost like I feel like if you watched this high, you probably would have been uh, you probably would have OD'd. Not trying to be funny there, but uh, you, if you're high, you'd probably be going crazy. Cause I mean, cause I feel like okay, how the hell is that possible? Just I mean, damn, how can, exactly can you get through that? It's just shocking. The acting is not great, but it's solid, for, especially for the budget they had at the time. The characters, I guess, are pretty okay. I mean, they're not really like the horror movie. They're not really the teen stereotypes that we've grown accustomed to, that unfortunately we've been forced to accept in today's horror movies. Although this was back in the 80s. We're in the 2010s by now. And unfortunately, I think this is a major low for horror films. Well, even though we had good ones like It Follows, The Conjuring. Those were the only good ones I saw. I wanted to see Cabin in the Woods. I really want you guys. But I just haven't found it yet. Yeah, it was on Netflix, but I didn't get the chance to see it. Hopefully, we put back on Netflix soon. Because actually, I would like to see that. I mean, I don't think I could... Oh, it's not worth buying or renting. I just, you know, I want to see it as quick as I can. And hopefully, try to avoid paying money for it. Because, I mean, I don't really have a job, guys. Still would. I mean, you know me, I'm in high school. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah. Also, I love some of these... Uh, is it scary? Somewhat. Mostly in terms of the kills, it actually just really, it's just creepy. It just really is just, it's kind of eyebrow raising some of these kills. I mean, knowing the fact that like one of Nancy's friends is killed, like she's just, throw, she's just thrown in the air and she's, you know, I think she's thrown in the ceiling and then she's being drug, dragged up the ceiling and just like slashed. Holy shit. There's also some sort of comedy to it. There's even some bit of dark comedy in it, and I like that. It's pretty entertaining to watch it sometimes, especially with Freddy. Freddy doesn't take himself seriously. He sometimes likes to be, you know, crazy and cartoony, but it works because Robert Englund knows what he's doing. I mean, this guy is the most iconic role today in his best role, not Oscar worthy, but it is pretty good. Also, I like the design of Freddy. In fact, he has like a burnt face, and he's just so crazy and shit. He does add this comedic touch to him, and it is pretty cool. You know, like slap. There's also some creative kills in this movie. One of my favorite kills and one of the most iconic horror movie kills of all time is, of course, Giant up being dragged into the bed. There's like a hole in there, and just blood spews out of it, and like it just covers the ceiling and just starts dripping. I feel like holy shit. That's a really one hell of a holy shit moment when you're thinking like it's watching a horror movie. It's just really like, oh my god. And I like listening to the song. One, two, Freddy's coming for you. Three, four, better lock your door. Five, six, grab your crucifix. Seven, eight, better stay up late. Nine, ten, never sleep again. I actually remember that. And you know, from what I remember, yeah. It's not. It's not a scary movie. It's not that scary, but it is very suspenseful. But also, there is a sense of fun into it, like just like dark, creepy fun. So it's cool about that. I do like some of the, the characters are, I guess, that kind of well developed. I do like the premise. It's very creative and interesting. But also this mystery behind Freddy. I mean, the only thing you know about him was that he was burned alive by. He was like this like child killer. 
I believe. I think it's a child killer, main child molester. Comment below. I don't know what version, because I think they changed some of it from the remake from what I've heard. And maybe what I heard from a comment from you know, like family, one of the family, family Flicks video from when he was doing his top 10 horror movies, and I think maybe he made, made a mistake over Freddy in the original Nightmare on Elm Street. I don't know. Just comment below if he was either a child killer or a molester. All I know is that he was burned alive by parents. There is still some sort of mystery behind him, but unfortunately, that backstory now is death. Jesus Christ, talk about gruesome, even by parents. I do like some of the elaborate traps that she sets up to catch him. It's pretty cool. And there is some bit of suspense in there. I actually have to give credit to that. There is some bit of suspense in there. There's some creative kills. There's some creative traps. It's very suspenseful, and I have to admit, there were some pretty surprising moments. This really is very creative, yet it doesn't really take too much advantage of its so-called logic, although really a lot. There's nothing realistic about it, but it uses its creativity to true effect, especially with the budget they had back then. There are some pretty brutal kills. There are some creative kills. There's a lot of things about this, but also it's very influential for slasher flicks. I mean, there's a lot of great influences. I mean, this and Halloween are two of some of the greatest influences in slashers. Hell, even Friday the 13th, I don't think it's that great a movie. Yeah, I know. It's not good to say. But it's not a great movie, guys. You guys can acknowledge that. It's very creative, and... I do have to mention, it does do well with the uh, character. It, I think this is pretty cool. And he established Freddy Krueger as a horror icon. Same for Robert England. Same for Wes Craven as well. I have not seen Scream, guys. Hey, I'm the only one. I will watch it one day. Um, it is dated, don't get me wrong. It's not really scary, but I think it's very suspenseful. But also, I think there's a lot of things to make up for it. It's kind of like flaws. I mean, it's very influential. It's, it's a major influence in horror films. It's very creative, it's very... No one really uses this concept anymore. Usually they just use all these crappy... Usually it's the only thing for, like, crappy dream sequences for cheap thrills, which is such bullshit. But, uh, it's very influential, it's very creative. I think it holds up pretty well today. It's one of my, it's one of my favorite horror films of all time. And so far, my, West, my favorite Wes Craven film. I've not seen Scream, guys, so I can't really say it's my favorite. It's so far, it's my favorite, but... Whatever. Whatever. It's a horror film I recommend. I mean, it could really, but it really makes you think more. And really, the legacy is undeniable. You just can't beat that. Nightmare on Elm Street gets a five out of five. It's not really the five out of five we're thinking. Like, oh, it's a masterpiece. Five out of five for being. I mean, it gets a five out of five because I mean, I didn't find any real flaws with it. Like in the so-called flaws with it, I could I kind of iron out because I mean, I did think this film was really good. It's very creative, very suspenseful at times. has a cool has a character that adds so much personality to this film. Also, he's just he's just a cool character. He's entertaining, but also pretty grizzly. There's some great kills, and overall, yeah, it's a very creative premise. Overall, it's really just one of the, it's one of my favorite horrors of all time. And also, thanks to its creativity and the influence. It's my opinion, guys. Make your own. You have the power to. And just, anyways, guys, my review for the original Nightmare on Elm Street. Comment below what you think about it. How's the remake compared to this? Obviously, you're going to hate it. What's your favorite Wes Craven movie? And what's your favorite slasher film? How I can, uh, It's going to be hard for me to choose between this and Halloween. I mean, these guys, they both have influence. They have both incredibly iconic horror movie characters. And they're different. They are similar in terms of genre, but they also have their own. They also have their own way. They have their own footing from, in terms of a slasher film. You got to mean they have their own different style, and it works well for both of them. Comment below and subscribe to my channel for more videos.